Hello, my name is Stacy Westfall, and today I'm going to show you how to use these stackable training cones. I use cones in my training all the time because of the importance of patterns. When you have a pattern and you have a plan, it helps you ride a lot more specifically. We've also gone ahead and put numbers on these cones because one of my favorite training patterns is a four-leaf clover pattern. And for this four-leaf clover pattern that I'm going to teach you here today, you're going to be going and making a continuous turn whichever direction you start. So right now I'm going to the right. So I'm going to be doing a continual four-leaf clover. If you could see this from above, each one of these as I come out around here is a leaf, and then I come back to the center of my four-leaf clover. So right now I'm getting ready to go out around cone number one. My goal in this pattern is to, as the rider, be planning ahead to be looking ahead. I'm coming around cone number one. I'm looking off to cone number two, but I know I've got to come out around here to the middle, which is what's going to make this a four-leaf clover pattern. I'm around here to cone number two. As I get to the back side, I look up to cone number three. And by having these numbers on the cones like this, it is providing you a free riding instructor. Because if you're out here riding by yourself, a lot of times I'll see people get lost and they'll go off from three and they'll go over here and they'll accidentally go diagonally across the pattern because they don't have somebody standing there to tell them, uh-oh, you're going off pattern. And as the rider, a lot of things can start happening while you're up here because we're going to practice this pattern faster than just a walk. And as you're going around here, Sometimes you'll be thinking about whether or not your horse was steering or pulling in or pulling out and you'll find yourself lost in the pattern by having the numbers on here. When you come around from cone number three, you're going to be looking up to cone number four. And this is also going to help you as the rider to be riding more with a purpose because when I get to cone number four and I know I'm headed back over to cone number one, I'm going to do a better job as a rider looking where I'm going. As I turn and I look around the corner, it changes the way that I sit on my horse. And by riding with a purpose like this, this is how your horse is going to get that more subtle cueing system that we're all after. So I'm going to take Vaquero here and I'm going to move up to a trot. This pattern can be done at all gates. It can be done in all different bridles. So right now if I'm using a shanked bit, I could be doing this in a snaffle bit. I can be doing it one-handed or two-handed. And it's going to give me a very specific goal. The more often that I look up and around where I want to go, the more Vaquero is going to get comfortable with what that feels like. And that's going to allow me, as he gets more advanced, to give more subtle cues that he's going to listen to because we've practiced with so much consistency and so much repetition. A frequently asked question about this pattern is what size would you set this pattern up? When I set this pattern up, the easiest way to start is to stand where this center cone would go and lunge your horse on the 24 foot line and lunge the horse out around here and see how comfortable the horse moves. If the horse has trouble loping. If it's a big 16, 17 hand horse, if it's a big horse, then the horse is going to need to learn a lot more coordination. So you might want to set this pattern up a little bit bigger. The bigger the pattern is, the easier it is. The more that you want to challenge yourself and your horse and to really reach for those higher levels of performance, the more you need to shrink that pattern down just a little bit. So Vaquero is not a very big horse, so we're going to go with a smaller pattern here. Right now what I want you to kind of get visually and in your head is when I'm coming around here, as I ride around this pattern on Vaquero, we're going to use a couple other riders here in a minute to demonstrate this pattern. I want you to think that when you're doing this pattern, you're trying to figure out, first, you just want to conquer doing the pattern. Second, I want you to figure out how to make these loops nice and smooth and even so that as I approach cone number one, I am about the same distance away from the cone right here as I am when I am right here and again when I am right here. Because a problem that you're going to see 
caused by both either the rider not knowing how to steer the horse well, or the problem can be caused because it can be a very green horse if your horse only has 30 or 60 days of riding, the steering is not going to be perfect. Or it can be caused because you and your horse are just a new team working together. But some of the problems you're going to see are that when people are coming around here, they're going to kind of cut this cone and almost run it over. And you'll see them almost or, or really run this one over. And then they'll come over here. This cone will almost get run over. Well, when you almost run over this cone, it ends up making you go really wide here. Then once you go really wide leaving the cone, again, it sets you up to come to this cone too close. And when you come too close, you start getting this real wobbly steering. The purpose of this is to get you really thinking and focusing on how to get around these cones nice and smooth. So I'm going to ride Vaquero here for just a minute in a couple other gates and show you how this pattern can work at a walk, a trot, and a lope one-handed and two-handed. The degree of difficulty is going to change depending on how small the cones are set up. And so the size that I have this set up for is really good for somebody who's learning the pattern at a walk or a jog. If you start to do an extended trot on about a 15 hand horse in this size, you're going to start to feel that it feels tighter. And you could see how it was a challenge for Vaquero because as he went around those corners, especially when you watch me go around cone one, as he goes around these corners, he's got to make a decision to really collect and use his body well or to try to break gait. So what you saw happen when I went to lope around cone number one was that he, he, he asked if he could stop or break down to a trot because he really didn't want to do the work of collecting up and really using his body because it's very much like doing a a very correct sit up or push up. It's a, it's a lot of work. And so this pattern is great for conditioning. I'm going to go ahead and go the opposite direction. So as I'm going around it the other direction, I do not need to change my cones, even though when I was going to the right, I was going one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to be going to the left. And the way that I've got the cones set up, I'm going to be going four, three, two, one. I can ride this pattern one-handed. There's a lot of training exercises that we can use on this cone pattern. Look ahead. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to two-handed. Now I'm going to go out around the outside of the pattern. So I'm going to lope a circle out around the outside of all four of the cones. And I'm going to establish a nice, round, even circle. I use this in my reining patterns all the time because this is a size that I would do my small, slow circle in a reining pattern. And a lot of people struggle with doing a small, slow because it seems very difficult. But if you set up a small, slow that is just a little bit bigger than your four leaf clover pattern, when you come down to your small, slow in your reining pattern and you want to practice that speed control, if you offer the horse the chance to slow down in the small slow and the horse doesn't slow down, what I'll do is I'll take that horse into a four leaf clover pattern inside of my small slow circle. So you can see how this four leaf clover pattern fits inside 
of my small slow reining circle. And we've already talked about how these tight turns encourage Vaquero to really want to slow down because it's a lot of work, so he really desires to slow down because of this pattern being used here. Another great thing about this pattern is you can use it inside of a round pen area or any kind of a small area that you have to ride. 